You may have noticed an art installation outside our church this week. The images on your screen each represent an important moment from Jesus' final steps as he wend his way to Calvary. Together, they're called the Stations of the Cross. And throughout history, Christians have used pieces of artwork like these, along with the stories in Scripture, to help them intentionally reflect on Christ's journey to the cross. We hope that your joining with us in these moments of reflection each day will help prepare our collective hearts for the grief of Good Friday, the expectant longing of Holy Saturday, and the triumphant celebration of Easter Sunday. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. John 19 and 15. At this, the third station of the cross, Jesus is condemned to death. Having been handed over by the religious leaders, he finds himself before Pilate, the Roman governor. As you listen to today's reading, imagine yourself at the scene as an onlooker, maybe one of the religious leaders, maybe one of the crowd, or even Pilate, or as Jesus himself. And as you listen, note that Jesus submits quietly and peacefully. He remains silent. And also note that it was the religious leaders who condemned Jesus. And also think about what was their fear? What was it about Jesus that threatened them? What was it that they wanted him condemned to death for? The passage you're about to hear is going to be read three times. This first time, simply allow the text to wash over you. If there's a word or a phrase that sticks out to you, make note of it. There's no need to force things here. Simply wait patiently for God's still, small voice to speak to you through his word. This is Matthew 27, 11 to 26. Now as Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor, Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, You have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges much to the governor's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom each year during Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus? who is called the Messiah. He knew very well that, that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, We will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. On this second reading of the passage, feel free to focus in on any specific part that has stood out to you. Get curious. 
What might God be trying to say to you? Matthew 27, 11 to 26. Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these charges that they're bringing against you? Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no, no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. And the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning. He asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, We will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. On this third and final reading of the text, Consider the circumstances of your life. Why might God be bringing you this specific message at this particular time? Is there an action that you feel called into taking? Please make sure to also continue in prayer, perhaps do some journaling, and share with others in your life who can help you to understand the invitation that God may be extending to you. Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, You have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these charges they're bringing against you, Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, 
crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. Father God, we ask for forgiveness when we just go with the crowd, when it's the easier option to take, and when we don't take the opportunities that you give us, when we let you down, please forgive us. Give us courage to take a stand for justice and righteousness. Help us to live our lives wholly for you. We ask for wisdom to know when to speak and when to remain silent. And when we do speak, give us the correct words and attitude that honour you. We thank you for the dignity of Jesus and his willingness to take our guilt upon himself so that we can come to you and call you our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.